Conflict in the Middle East has dominated talks around the UN General Assembly in New York this week, but a high-level meeting to discuss the potentially catastrophic effects of antibiotic resistance is also on the agenda tomorrow. It's estimated 40 million people could die directly due to drug-resistant infections by 2050. Joining me now is Dr Aaron Elborn, Associate Professor and Specialist in Novel Antimicrobial Treatments and Diagnostics at RMIT. Thank you for your time. This has been in the headlines for a little while. Is it getting worse and why? Yes, it is getting worse. And thank you so much for having me on today. Um, we first got estimates a few years ago that we were going to have about 10 million deaths by 2050. This new report has gone up by a factor of four, which means that our predictions are getting worse based on new data and also the escalation of antibiotic resistance and antimicrobial resistance in our population of pathogens that make us ill. Um, this is a very serious problem and being in the field, I'm very worried about this new report. In terms of why it's getting worse, Anecdotally, it's yes. that we're using too much of what we have, antibiotics, that they're used for things they shouldn't be, and it, it means uh, these bugs, I'm going to use a very common word for it, it get yep. that resistance. Is that accurate? I mean, I, I, I've been... I, I've had a doctor say, oh, here's some antibiotics, take it if you want, and I, I tend to go, well, I'll, I'll just wait till it gets a bit worse. Um, yeah. Is, is it that simple? Your you're spot on the money there. It's a combination of things. One of those is the overprescription and also misuse of antibiotics and the current tools we have. The other thing is down to the individual person as well in that they may wait for things to get worse before they take it. They may not take a full course because they end up feeling better, which is not, not to blame the person at all, but it's a lack of that antibiotic awareness and stewardship that's really missing from the population, as well as the fact that sometimes if you were to go in with some GPs, and again, not pointing a finger of blame, but you might not be able to know if it's a bacterial infection or a virus, which you can't actually treat with these tools. The overprescription then mm. is used for basically nothing. Um, and the bacteria that naturally live in our body or on our body start to build this resistance because we're exposing them. Um, one of the other big issues is that we simply don't have enough funding and we don't have enough research in the area where currently, I believe if I last checked, there's only about 27 new antibiotics on the market currently going through that pipeline of approval. And that doesn't equal 27 out that actually can be used in the general population okay. because there is a good chance that a lot of those won't go all the way through to proper trials and ever be seen on the shelf. Okay. So with that rate, what we're seeing is our current tools diminishing. We don't have them working anymore. And the tools that we're trying to actually build or make new ones aren't coming out of that pipeline fast enough, leading to a very dire situation where people are going to be getting infections, we can't treat anymore. Hmm. And when it comes to that, you'll simply right. be going to a doctor and saying, I'm infected, and they'll say, unfortunately, we have no lines of defence anymore. Either you win via your natural body's way of cleaning an infection out, or you don't win and the worst happens. Yeah, which literally takes us back hundreds of years. So, OK, you outlined that the, what you hope will be fixed in terms of a funding issue and, and ramping up our ability to... To, to solve it through science, but, you know, there's an old line, prevention and a cure. On that other aspect, am I getting this right, that first of all, uh, in terms of what you should do is um, wait? Is waiting a good idea? For most things, you can either say, if it gets worse, then I take the antibiotics, or, or does that create its own issue? What, what's the simple advice for, for the everyday person going to the doctor? Everyday person? I think that you should be listening to your doctor when you go there. As a uh, PhD doctor, I'm not a medical doctor at all, so I don't promise to be that way. But if your doctor tells you to take mm. a course of antibiotics, you should be taking it, and you should be taking it all the way to completion. So don't stop after three days because you feel better. Make sure you take the whole lot because that allows us to wipe out all of the bacteria that may become resistant later. The other thing that you want to do is you want to be getting on top of an infection early. If you find yourself in a situation where you think you've got an infection and you're showing signs, go to your emergency room. Okay. Go and speak to your GP. Seek help. The lower your bacterial load, the faster we can bring that down and we won't have as many um, antibiotic-resistant pathogens out there in the world. So that's better. Dr Aaron Elborn, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.